एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर जयंती शास्त्री इन टी हेड एंड एक्सर्जन मणिपाल हॉस्पिटल मलेश्वर टूडे आई वुड लाइक टू स्पीक अबाउट द सेकेंड हाफ ऑफ द वट एगो विच हैड ऑलरेडी डन द फर्स्ट हाफ आई हैड ऑलरेडी डन फ्यू वीक्स एगो वेलकम बैक टू द सेकेंड सेशन ऑफ वट एगो सो एज आई एक्सप्लेन इन माई लास्ट वीडियो दैट वेन पेशेंट्स कम टू अस विद गिडीनेस और इम्बैलेंस विद एसोसिएटेड सिम्टम्स we first do the preliminary examination to rule out all other problems then come to a conclusion that it is vertigo it could be of central origin or peripheral origin then we take up the patients for further investigation so central origin means the vertigo is uh, arising from the brain peripheral origin is with any of the peripheral organs maybe uh, nerves or maybe uh, ear basically ear so i what i do the first thing i tell the patient is that i reassure the patient yes this can be brought under control provided the patient has some patience and perseverance to take the medications and uh, do the exercises as we teach and things like that um, if they have the patience then this condition can be brought under control uh this problems cannot be solved in a hurry so um if it is uh, the uh, highly suspicious of central origin vertigo then central origin as i said is arising from the brain then we would want to do a mri brain so here i would like to uh, mention one thing is that many a times the uh, highly suspicious means the peripheral as well as central they'll be overlapping each other the symptoms will be overlapping each other and uh, sometimes they coexist both peripheral and central vertigo coexist so uh, what happens is uh, mri brain becomes a must so some patients don't want to undergo mri brain maybe financial issues but some patients they feel that when we say um, get an mri then they feel just for a giddiness why this mri for so for such people my sincere advice and request is to undergo this uh, uh, investigation because if we don't uh, rec- for example if we don't recognize a tumor in the brain in early stages it becomes difficult to uh, later on to operate also uh, as well as it may become impossible also to remove the tumor sometimes so uh, initially if the like, uh, ent surgeon suggests an mri it may be because for these reasons so uh, we have ruled out all that and when you come to our vertigo clinic so uh, if it is a peripheral vertigo we have to start doing some tests so uh, first of all as the patient is sitting we look for nystagmus nystagmus is movement of the eyes without uh, actually shaking the head so the actually the patient will be feeling the giddiness when he is moving the when the eye movement is occurring so positional first of all uh, a positional testing is done um, with the uh, uh, head in the supine position with the patient lying down in the supine position that means straight on the bed and then on the right side turn the head to the right and to the left also uh, when we see that there is a direction changing nystagmus that means to say it should be, it should be a peripheral uh, vertigo so the next comes the head thrust uh, thrust test this actually is a simple bedside test it can be uh, detect it can detect unilateral or bilateral vestibular disorders or sometimes even uh, it can differentiate it from the central disorders so this test is done as shown in the picture patient is seated in front of the examiner and uh, patient's head is held with the hands of the examiner then the ask the patient to uh, look at the nose of the examiner and turn the head to one side uh, and then to the other side so in this while turning we note uh, something called corrective saccades so if this is present that means to say it is peripheral vertigo then coming to the romberg's test here the patient is made to stand straight as shown in the picture and uh, if first with eyes open then with the eyes closed uh, if there is swaying when there is when the patient closes his eyes then that means to say the test is positive then the next comes the antenberger's test where in the same position the patient has to 
walk uh, in the same place that is do something like a march past in the same place so if the patient uh, turns to with eyes open first and then eyes closed when eyes is closed if the patient turns to one side that means to say on that side the vestibular system is weak so this is how we try to lateralize means to which side which side the vestibular system is weak that is how we try to lateralize and then next coming to the dix halbach test this test you can see the patient is first seated like uh, as shown in the picture and in the next picture you can see the patient lying down and turning the head to 45 degrees so um, once the pa patient is seated like this and then uh, the head made to lie down and turn the head there can be uh, nystagmus so we need note down the nystagmus until the nystagmus ab abates um, or the until giddiness subsides that the patient is or for or, or for 30 seconds whichever is later we ask the patient to lie in that position and then turn the head to the other side so uh, this way again we'll be able to either lateralize the uh, disorder which side is affected or sometimes uh, both sides may be affected so uh, we these are the tests to uh, help us to lateralize the disorders next test is supine lateral head turns um, in the previous test, as I said, Dick's Halpack test, there's a pillow given below the uh, uh, shoulder. But whereas in the next test, that is supine head lateral test, the patient is asked to lie down flat on the bed. And then uh, first in the supine position, then turn the head to one side 90 degrees, then turn the head to other side 90 degrees. Each time, we have to wait for 30 seconds at least or till the giddiness subsides so that we will be able to make out which side the patient is getting the giddiness more then so uh, these and there are some uh, tests like a caloric test where, where we in, induce uh, ice cold water into the ear and this is done mainly for uh, menial species um, so um, of course we, menial species don't come in this uh, uh, positional vertigo but i'm just mentioning it uh, it is done to rule out this menial disease and things like that and except when the patient comes in a very uh, 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 severe with a very severe vertigo we should always include audiometry audiometry is a hearing test so that we can rule out certain conditions like Meniere's disease as well as some ototoxic conditions because sometimes uh, some drugs do cause some toxicity to the ear or some uh, uh, chemicals do cause uh, or toxicity to the ear so uh, we have to rule out such conditions hence audiometry is a must where there will be a lot of hearing uh, deficiency also along with giddiness. So now coming to the principles of management. As I already said, empathy and reassurance, that is the most important thing when the patient comes to us. We have to elevate the anxiety by explaining the cause of vertigo and the nature of the disorder. And we have to give a positive counseling. Then comes the pharmacotherapy, then comes the vestibular rehabilitation. The surgery is not very much in, uh, there for these kind of disorders. Uh, very rarely it is done. Then coming to the pharmacotherapy, we give antihistaminics, antivertigo drugs like cinerizin, betahistin, and antiemetics to avoid vomiting. So uh, in, initially these are given in a high dose. Then uh, the dose is uh, reduced subsequently. In some cases like Meniere's disease, we do ask them to have do salt restriction and uh, give them diuretics and of course beta histin and uh, intratympanic injections of corticosteroids or gentamicin. Now coming to the most important thing, the vestibular rehabilitation maneuvers. What we do when the patient comes to the hospital. Okay, these maneuvers, um, there are there are many maneuvers. I'll explain only a few of them. The first one, Epley's maneuver. As you can see in the picture, it's a series of pictures. The, in the first picture, the patient is sitting up. In the second picture, the patient is made to lie down and turn the head to one side, 45 degrees. And then, uh, they, uh, wait for the nystagmus to come down or the giddiness to come down. Then turn the head to 90 degrees on to the other side. Wait for the giddiness to come down. Then the patient is made to uh, lie down on, one, on the side of the uh, on the opposite side of the uh, problem uh, then he she's back to sitting position so these are the four positions that normally done each time we wait for 30 seconds or until the giddiness subsides 
So once this is done, many a times, many a times, the giddiness completely comes down. So uh, this is the next maneuver we do is the sermons maneuver. Of course, we uh, decide which maneuver to do for which patient. So sermons maneuver is as a patient as it is seen. The patient is sitting in the first with the head. Uh, I mean, with the on the side of the bed with the legs down. Then she is made to lie down. Uh, she, then her head is turned to one side, 45 degrees. Maybe if, if the problem is on the left side, the patient is asked to turn to the opposite side, 45 degrees, and then made to lie down as shown in the picture. And she has to look up at the ceiling and wait for about 30 seconds. Then get up and come back to this position. And with the 45 degrees head turn like that only, she has to lie down onto the other side with her uh, with her face looking to the looking the, at the floor. So this completes the sermon's maneuver. Next comes the guffoni or epiani maneuver. This is for done for the horizontal canals. Okay, as I had uh, explained uh, in my first slide, there are three canals: horizontal, posterior, and anterior. So uh, of that, if this this if there is a problem with the horizontal canal, this test is uh, this maneuver is done. Patient is made to lie down straight away from the affected side. The head is turned to 90 degrees to look down later. Then she is made to sit up and then the head is corrected. So this is done for the lateral semicircular canals. Next comes the Iacovino maneuver. Here this is done for the posterior semicircular canal. Uh, actually to uh, diagnose which side in posterior semicircular canal is difficult. So this is a central maneuver done for uh, patients like this. So uh, with um, the patient is made to lie down with the head dangling beyond the bed and then the patient is asked to flex the head up to the such that her chin touches the neck as shown in the picture. Then uh, there is some one more maneuver called log roll or barbecue maneuver. Like uh, uh, this one is done in the barbecues. So, so also the patient is first uh, suppose the left side is affected. The patient is asked to lie down on the left side. Then uh, he or she is asked to turn on to supine position. Then he or she is asked to turn to the right side. Wait each time, wait for 30 seconds. And then he is asked to lie down on the stomach. Then come back to the left side position. So this is something like a barbecue rolling. So it's called a barbecue maneuver. So this is also done uh, for uh, some lateral semicircular canals. So these are the maneuvers. Uh, there are some more maneuvers which uh, it becomes too much. So uh, I'm uh, now coming to the post maneuver care. What you have to do? Well, at least for one week, the patient should uh, uh, at least for one week the patient should care, take care of all this. He should be uh, for a few hours after the maneuver. The patient should be upright and while sleeping in the night also, the pillows have to be kept at least 45 degrees. With uh, multiple pillows, the patient should be lying down 45 degrees and uh, throughout the night and he should not turn the head on to the affected side. Okay, And uh, he should not go, he or she should not go to a dentist or a hairdresser for at least a week and he should avoid exercises requiring uh, head movements including sit-ups, toe touches and freestyle swimming and things like that. This is for one week. Then after one week, we have to we give them adaptation exercises. The exercises they have to do at home. So the first of them is the head uh, head and neck exercises as shown in the picture. The uh, first anti front and back and then side to side. So first slowly, then fast. Each uh, each moment at least it has to be repeated twenty times. Then this is another uh, exercise where you uh, sit, uh, stand from a sitting position uh, and then turn around. So uh, this is also, uh, what happens is initially with the eyes open and then with the eyes closed, the patient turns around so that what happens is uh, uh, slowly, slowly they get adapted to turning around with the eyes closed. So the uh, giddiness slowly, the body gets slowly adapted to it and the giddiness uh, subsides. Then coming to the next uh, exercise, this is you have to turn both the head and as shown in the picture head and trunk uh, to the right and to the left. Okay. 
So uh, this is also repeated 20 times. So then coming to the next one, when shoulder rotation, shoulder is rotated anteriorly, anteriorly means in front, to front and behind each 20 times um, as shown in the picture. So uh, then coming to the next one that is picking up an object from the floor. This patient is made, made to sit on a stool and an object is placed on the ground and then uh, he has to pick up that object, pick up, again drop it, pick up and drop it. So this has to also be done 20 times. And the next one is, uh, this is a, a brand of exercise, it's called brand of exercise. You can see in the picture that first, first the patient is seated, the head is turned to 45 degrees away from the affected side and the patient is made to lie down like that only on the, on the bed. So with the 45 degrees looking up at the ceiling, they have to repeatedly do this 30, 20 times uh, along with the other exercises. So these are a few exercises that uh, uh, we teach the patient so that they continuously do it for at least for a period of about a month or four weeks to six weeks. Then um, along with all these exercises, there are certain add-on therapies. Uh, we give Jinko Biloba for at least three months and stress management, many of these diseases including headache, giddiness, many of these diseases are because of stress. So stress management is the most important thing. Like meditation is a uh, very good tool for stress management. And then uh, yoga. yoga, yoga, asanas as well as pranayamas. They are very good for stress management as well as for they act like a rehabilitation uh, exercises also. And adequate amount of sleep is very much required and hydration, drinking plenty of water, at least about two to one half liters of water per day. And vitamin D, nowadays we see that vitamin D deficiency is there for everybody, almost everybody. So vitamin D uh, is another important thing and avoiding alcohol. Alcohol should be avoided, especially during the rehabilitation exercises and uh, during this therapy. Then there are certain diet changes like uh, caffeine um, should be reduced and uh, salt intake should be reduced because it causes some wa water retention and things like that. And nicotine, absolute no-no, no smoking at all. And as I said already, alcohol. So foodstuffs that should be included are plenty of water as I said and tomatoes which are rich in potassium. And nuts, they provide uh, antioxidants, micronutrients, they are anti-inflammatory also. So nuts should be included in the diet and fresh fruits. So uh, intratympanic injections when patients don't respond to any of this uh, uh, procedures and things like that or pharmacotherapy, then we are left with no choice but to give some intratympanic injections. We may give uh, steroid aminoglycoside or a combination of both into the ear, into the middle ear. So last but not the least is surgical options which is very rare. We don't do surgery uh, for these conditions which is quite rare. But yes, there are certain uh, surgical options for this condition also. That is all I would like to tell you about uh, this vertigo. Thank you for uh, watching this uh, FB live session and if you like this video then uh, please share it with your uh, family and friends who may be benefited by this and uh, let us meet in the next session. Thank you so much.